In part two of our habitat evaluation series, we're gonna look at some TSI work that I've done on my property that you can easily do on yours to improve the wildlife habitat and increase forest health. Mossy Oak Properties, where outdoorsmen find their favorite place. Well, we're in the month of August already. Think about that, the year has yeah. flown by. And I know in many parts of the country, hunting season starts usually around September 1st. Right. So the last thing that we're kind of thinking about is doing some management work on areas that we're gonna be actually even hunting in. Yeah. But there's still some things that you can do to improve your quality of management now and see the results of it that you did earlier in the year. That's right. Wildlife management, I think it's important to remember, it's, it's a cumulative effect. Mm -hmm. We do things that we can see immediate benefits from, mm -hmm. but more times than not, most of our work takes time to come to fruition or to, yeah. to realize their, the biggest possible benefit. And what we're going to discuss in this video is one of those management practices and techniques, TSI. And, and one of the situations using hack and squirt or girdle and spray this time of year, starting in late summer going into early fall is actually the best time of year to do it. Yeah. And is it a stay? Are we going to see the benefits from it this hunting season? No. No. This winter? No, really not until maybe this time next year. Yeah. But it's important to look at the big picture and realize that it's the management decisions we make add up little by little. There's no magic bullet microwave success to wildlife management. Each decision we make is a chance to leave things better than we found it. And in this video, we're going to go over, again, some of the TSI work that I've done both in herbicide treatments and in flush cutting trees completely down. Look at the response, what my goals were, what I was hoping to accomplish with them, evaluate that and see how wildlife are responding to it. Yeah, wildlife management can be 365 day type of thing. It's how you manage that time is one thing, right. but there's always something that you could do, but don't let that build resentment towards your property. That's right. Timber stand improvement is one of the easiest things that you can do to see some really great results from it. With a little bit of chainsawing, a little bit of time, and some herbicide, you can create some great results on your property. That's right. Almost next to fire, secondary to fire, it's probably the cheapest and maybe the most effective management tool as landowners that we have access to. Because Eric, as Eric mentioned, with very simple tools, a little bit of work, a little bit of elbow grease, we can create entire ecosystems. And we can, which is really exciting as I say that, it really got me excited for this chainsaw season. <laughs> But with its one management decision being TSI, we can benefit an entire ecosystem. That's what we're going to look at right now in this part of my property where my dad and I have flush cut the majority of the trees. We've done some hack and squirt in here, but the majority of our management on this part of the property was flush cutting pole timber, yellow poplar trees. It was a monoculture of pop, yellow poplar, tulip poplar about this size. We didn't kill them all because yellow poplar, they're important for pollinators and honeybees especially so we're not we're not wiping out the entire stand a stand of poplar trees but there was an excess of them and we want diversity when we're managing for wildlife so we came in and flush cut the majority of the trees and our main goal for here was to create some rough grouse habitat because this is a part of the property where we have rough grouse and also to create because of the topography because of how I know deer use my property and especially this part of it some deer bedding because we're up high on a ridge, it's south facing. I wanted to create an area where deer can bed down and feel comfortable and safe. And dad and I have been chipping away at this and we're almost done. I mean, we're, there are a few trees left stand that aren't, that aren't completely cut off or haven't been treated with herbicide. So this project is almost done as far as the cutting goes and the response is really incredible because if you look behind me, you can see all of this vegetation and it's wing stem, it's snake root, there's goldenrod, there's some grasses in there, forbs, poplar regeneration, little poplar seedlings, and it's great brooding habitat for rough grouse, great brooding habitat for turkey poults. Deer, I know, are gonna benefit from this and they're gonna bed in this area, hopefully as we intended. But one management decision can benefit the entire ecosystem, and our wildlife species I know are gonna benefit because I see fawns up here all the time. I jump deer out of their beds up here during the summer when I'm up here spot spraying invasive species. But remember, we're managing for entire ecosystems, not just individual species. And here we have snake root, which is a native wildflower and a late blooming wildflower. It, it has very little deer value. It's actually toxic to humans, but here in about another 
few weeks or to a month, it's going to have beautiful white flowers, which are going to be an important late summer pollen and nectar source for pollinators like bees and butterflies. Right beside me is wingstem, same situation. It's a great umbrella plant, as is the snake root for turkey poults and grouse chicks to get underneath of it. I have always see deer bedding in stands of wingstem, and here very soon there are actually some behind me. They're, they'll produce really beautiful yellow flowers, which again, late summer nectar source for pollinators or butterflies. I always see swallowtail butterflies on wingstem at the end of summer, so one management decision we are benefiting the game species that we're after, turkeys, grouse, white-tailed deer, but because we're managing for entire ecosystems and paying attention to little details and being aware of the work that we're doing, we're also benefiting our pollinators, our insects, our native insects from this January 1st to December 31st, just because of a little TSI work, running the chainsaw, cutting these trees down, we are benefiting wildlife throughout the entire year. All right, here's a cool benefit of flush cutting trees and honestly a big part of my decision making when I'm doing TSI and whether I want to flush cut a tree or treat it with herbicide, I'm thinking about what do I want to accomplish, what are my goals, and again on this part of the property it was rough grouse and white-tailed deer were the focus. And what we have right in front of me, it's called a mineral stump and I, as you can see I flush cut the tree and you can see all these tender shoots, all the tender sprouts are coming off of the stump and it's important to remember when you cut a tree down you're not killing the tree. The tree is alive underneath the ground in its root system and I'm just cutting the top of it off. All that energy, all the resources in the tree's roots, there was research done by Mississippi State Deer Lab that found when you flush cut a tree all the energy, all those resources in the roots, they, the tree is still alive, still wants to grow so it sends up a flush, a high concentration of resources that manifest themselves in these little tender green shoots that are highly nutritious, incredibly high in protein, highly palatable for white-tailed deer and as you can see it's, it's a preferred food source. Not only that, long term because we're managing for rough grouse we're going to get some coppicing off of this sprout, off of this stump as well. Eventually deer are either going to browse it so heavily that it's going to die or the shoots are going to grow out of deer's reach which will increase the stem density and stem count providing cover and structure for rough grouse. So one, cutting one tree we're feeding deer and letting sunlight hit the forest floor and increasing stem count and stem density for rough grouse. All work done just by flush cutting one tree. All right when we're evaluating the response of the work that we've done we want to keep in mind our goals and objectives and my goal and objective was to increase the amount of native vegetation on this part of the property, let sunlight hit the forest floor, increase cover and food for all wildlife species from insects to the deer that I pursue during the fall. And if you look around me, I consider this an enormous success. I step out into this wing stem and snake root and underneath there's some goldenrod, woodland sunflowers, some invasive species that I have to address which I understand and will in due time but that's just part of the name of the game. But I see the response all from a little bit of chainsaw work that my dad and I have done just over a few weekends over a couple years we've been really intentional about the decisions that we're making and the trees that we're cutting and I come here this time of year and I see all this plant response and I know how the wildlife are going to respond to it. The bees and butterflies on this wing stem and this snake root. If we get down low you can see how this is brooding habitat. Here's some deer browse right there. But if you're a grouse chick or a turkey poult, there's bare soil. I killed all this Japanese stilt grass. They can easily navigate through it. But these wing stem and snake root make great umbrella plants to protect them from avian predators. There's deer beds scattered all throughout here. We've seen butterflies flying around. We've heard bees. We hear birds singing. One management decision brought this entire part of the property to life. And took a little elbow grease for sure, but it's work that I enjoy and knowing that wildlife are benefiting from it just only makes me want to get after it even more. All right, well, another part of my property where we've done some timber stand improvement over the last couple of years, but with a different management style, different objectives, trying to accomplish different goals. At the first spot we looked at, we did chainsaw work, flush cutting the majority of the trees because we wanted a significant response from sunlight hitting the forest floor. And we wanted those tree tops to serve as structure and cover for fawning cover ground nesting birds and as you saw we feel like we accomplished that goal to the best of our abilities. This section again it's TSI but just a different different methodology different goals different objectives and the response is different as well which is really cool and this part of the property it was more herbicide the inverse of what we just saw 
this was the majority was hack and squirt or girdle and spray and flush cutting very very few trees but I feel like again that we accomplished our goals in this situation yeah it's it's amazing the different styles of timber stand improvement what the last place that we were at Cody went in there and did flush cutting different growth sunlight hits the forest floor quicker you have more growth you look around behind me the trees that Cody went in there and double girdled or girdled and herbicided or hack and squirted, it's a whole different dynamic, different plants. Um, the two styles, like when you cut the tree completely off, the root system, as Cody's mentioned, and the mineral stumps, it's still alive, so it's sending, en sending energy up. When you hack and squirt or double girdled or and herbicided, the tree instantly, the root system is dead and the tree just doesn't kind of know it yet. So you have a, a little bit of a slower uh, a death, if you will, just to be blunt. So, and it, the best part about it is many things. Since the trees, you know, the root system is completely dead, you're having all these plants and stuff getting benefits that surrounding, you know, water, uh, just the energy from the soil, etc. But the tree itself offers, even though it's dead, it's still alive because it's giving value to other wildlife bird, uh, species like birds, woodpeckers, etc. So it's still, it's dead, but it's still not dead. And the benefits from the surrounding area, different fauna, different species of plants. It's not that instant sunlight hitting the forest floor. So when you do this timber stand improvement, there's several types completely cut off, hack and squirt, double girdle. Utilize both on your piece of property because of the benefit to wildlife and the plant species that you'll attract. When doing or when deciding to do timber stand improvement, don't let it be bigger than what it is. Yeah. Meaning, don't overthink it. Right. There's several options that we went over. You know, the cutting, the, the herbicide, the use of herbicide. Just biggest thing, like everything in wildlife management, just have a plan. Yeah. Just don't look at a spot on the map and go, hey, this looks like a great idea. Yeah. No, what wildlife you want to attract? You know, that. Uh, how's it going to benefit my hunting? Right. Just have a plan. If you don't, don't ever not be afraid to ask, or be afraid to ask what do I do exactly <laughs> yeah the fundamental principles of timber stand improvement forest stand improvement they're the same the yeah. goal is to let sunlight hit the forest floor yeah. and what's cool as landowners as managers are there are a lot of different ways that we can accomplish that flush mm -hmm. cutting trees hack and squirt girdle and spray you know the the tools or the methodology it, it's dependent upon your situation your goals and objectives as you said so the founding principles are are simple don't overthink it we want sunlight to hit the forest floor and wildlife are going to benefit from that but once we start to look at the details and, and micromanage a little bit really evaluate your goals and what you're trying to accomplish and make intentional decisions based off of that as we saw in the second spot that's where i wanted to increase food and cover but I also wanted to do it in a situation where I was going to benefit from it mm -hmm. from a hunting perspective. Yeah. I didn't want to bump or, or spook deer in this area. The first spot where we looked at, I was pretty indiscriminatory in the trees that I cut or treated. There aren't many left standing up there that are still alive and that was done intentionally on purpose. We wanted to create an environment where deer can bed, feel safe and secure, increase some rough grouse habitat, and I feel like we accomplished both of our objectives with the decisions that we've made. So as Eric said, if you're unsure, ask. The fundamental principles are the same. We're trying to let sunlight hit the forest floor, and hopefully in this video, you've seen the benefits that can come from just a little bit of chainsaw work that anybody can do. I don't have a big chainsaw. No. I'm not cutting down big trees, but the result of the work that I've done for wildlife is significant. Yeah, and even having a big chainsaw, not even having a big vocabulary in the sense of the herbicide. A lot of these herbicides are very simple and, and easy to purchase through Tractor Supply, Rural Kings, or whatever, tra you know, yeah. equities. So don't, like again, not having it bigger than what it is and having a plan. And just like the clear cutting, just be prepared to have an open mind because you're going to see some wildlife that you've never seen before. Masio Properties. We're outdoorsmen by their favorite place.